There's one simple way that you can ruin video games for yourself. Here's how it happens. You like playing video games, and so do I from time to time. Escaping into another story is fun. Which is why I want to give you an understanding of how to avoid the sinister effect that wipes out all motivation and enjoyment that you get from games. And this has everything to do with the molecule dopamine. If there's anything that you take away from this video, know that dopamine has everything to do with how you feel right now. It's the primary primary determinant of how motivated, excited, sad, happy, willingness to lean into life, and even move at all you are. You can easily ruin video games for yourself, sometimes for good, by engaging in a game that you find exciting again too soon. Let me explain. The major mistake most people make isn't necessarily that they play games too much. If you don't find games very exciting, heck, you could play them all the time and avoid ruining them for yourself. It's exclusively people who enjoy enjoy games that have to watch out. And that's because people who enjoy games get a bigger spike in their dopamine when playing. And any spike you get always leads to a mirroring drop of it in your system afterwards. The bigger the spike, the bigger the drop. And you can ruin games for yourself because you only have a finite pool of the stuff inside of you. But much more critical to understand is dopamine doesn't suddenly turn on and off, but rather you have your own unique baseline of how much of the stuff is coursing through you in any given moment. If you've ever met anyone who always seems upbeat and driven to do whatever, then they likely have a higher dopamine baseline than others. Vice versa, if you've ever met anyone who just seems lethargic and not wanting to do anything, it's likely that they have a much lower baseline at any given moment. So what happens when you play a game that invigorates you and spikes your dopamine levels? Well, afterwards, your levels always drop below baseline. And the mistake that ruins games is things thinking that playing the same game again will bring you the same level of enjoyment you once had before your dopamine levels are able to recover back to baseline over the course of a good night's sleep or even longer. More enjoyment leads to bigger drops and longer recovery times. So as a final warning, if you just want to shoot your dopamine system in its knees, then re-engage in an exciting game as often as possible for hours on end every day, especially as soon as it starts to feel like like a punishment. Because you're not just depleting your finite daily allowance, but you're actually lowering your entire baseline itself, giving you less dopamine to spend from here on out every day, leading you to a long-lasting burnout and depression. You know what's dangerous about doing just one thing a lot? It's that the bigger of a spike it causes, the less likely you are to want to do anything else. This doesn't just go for good video games, but is the case for any thing that releases more of this sweet chemical. This process of narrowing down the things that bring you joy is what neuroscientists define as addiction. That whenever you're feeling low, you end up turning to this one thing to give you another rush. But the problem is that since your dopamine levels are still depleted, you either need a bigger stimulus from it to receive the same rush, or you don't get any satisfaction from it at all. And if you are successful in having an amazing time too soon, you only succeed in lowering your pressure baseline even more and make it harder to get any enjoyment from that game or activity again. And of course, most of us don't have a diagnosable addiction to video games. And video games, despite what some people may think, are really not even close to the worst thing out there for someone to enjoy, let alone do too much of. Just be conscious of the fact that dopamine is one currency. It's the only thing we have to spend on making us able to do anything, even move from the moment we get up. Here's a horror story? Some years ago, there was a situation where some illegal laboratories attempted to make a drug like heroin called MPPP. Addicts went out and attempted to buy the drug, but tragically, instead, they bought a drug known as MPTP. Unfortunately, what ended up happening was these addicts became what's known as being locked in, a state where you are completely paralyzed and unable to even blink, because MPTP destroys dopaminergic neurons in the brain, which without any dopamine to stimulate yourself, you cannot even move, and tragically this is irreversible. While this is likely something you don't have to worry about happening to you, a lesser something that many of us do every day that we generally want to stop is something called stacking. Stacking is when you couple multiple things together that all cause dopamine spikes in order to get an even bigger dopamine spike. This would be like drinking pre-workout while listening 
listening to your favorite pump-up music and eating a piece of cheesecake just so you can go to the gym and work out. This doesn't mean that you don't ever do things like eating your favorite snack while playing a game. Just be careful of how often and how much excitement you get out of it relative to other things in your life and be prepared for lowering in your dopamine afterwards. But how do you fix it? How are you supposed to engage in activities that bring you joy as part of your everyday life without lowering your precious baseline? The true key lies in intermittent release of dopamine. Not to expect or chase high levels of dopamine release every time you engage in these activities. Intermittent reward schedules are the central way that casinos keep us gambling, fun games keep us playing, and movies and content keep us watching. That every so often a reward is unlocked or something happens that excites us and keeps us searching for the next thing. Luckily for us, this is usually built and scripted into things like games and keeps us from experiencing a huge crash. But if you do find yourself crashing, it's important to stop doing that activity for a while until you recover. Unless you are able to do something that's pretty special. As backwards as a lot of the stuff is that I've spouted out, that I've taken straight from people like Dr. Andrew Huberman, you must understand that as a human being, you are powerful enough to dictate your own experience. So whenever you do any activity that brings you enjoyment, just do the thing. Don't always drink a cup of coffee, eat your favorite snack, play your favorite music, or anything to force yourself to actually be able to do whatever it is. What you're actually doing is raising the number of conditions required for you to achieve pleasure from that activity again. So sometimes you can do all the things you love that give you that best experience, while other times you don't do any of them. What this does is vary the amount of dopamine that you release when doing that activity. So I leave you with this. If you want to be able to maintain motivation for school, exercise, playing games, seeking relationships, or pursuits of any kind, the key thing is that you don't have a high peak in dopamine occurring very often. And anything you do that does occur often, you vary how much dopamine you experience from time to time. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved my most important detail for last. If you have something that you want to achieve in life, you can ruin your ability or someone else's ability to be able to work for it at all by giving yourself some sort of reward afterwards. When we receive rewards, even from ourselves, we tend to associate much less pleasure with the actual activity itself. Stay tuned for this next video where I'll go over the specifics of how to ruin your favorite TV shows, 